optimism and optimistic leaders is that they are okay to put their trust in others too. And so often we look at leaders in this dictatorial way where they have to be prescribing everything to you. But really good leaders risk with each other. They share with each other. And that's what we need to do as really good leaders is, is put ourselves in the hands of another person, even if it's as terrifying as this elephant jumping into the arms of the monkey. Typically, we measure uh, engagement as the benchmark, the most important data. Fill out this yes. survey. We're engaged. If you're engaged, wow, we check mark. Everything's great at our company. We are engaged. Awesome. And then everything else just sort of is um, you know, left behind. When we started to look at high-performing people, those ones that we talk about that, are, um, that love their job, mm -hmm. they will still be engaged. They are highly engaged people, even if they're just about to leave or go on um, long-term disability because they are completely in crisis. So engagement is not the definition of wellness and well-being and happiness. It's important and it's, and it's connected to our happiness. And we still need to look at um, being engaged as being a, an important part of our workplace um, environment. But if we're looking that, at that as the measure of success, it is absolutely 100% a false measure. Mindfulness actually creates emotional regulation. The more that we can listen to what I listen to, three things that I hear, this is an activity you can use, three things I hear, sometimes it's just one thing I hear, where I take one minute to listen to this. Silence. If we can take a minute or two minutes to just li let the back of our brain practice talking to the front of our brain, then what we can do is create emotional regulation. So when people meet you, you can meet them where they're at. I noticed that awesome tweet up there about the golden, golden rule. I wrote an article about that for HBR, about two do, uh, golden rule 2.0. And it's the idea about meeting people where they're at. Don't do unto others as they would have done unto you. Do unto others as they would have done unto them. It's really important for us to be thinking about how we can meet people where they are. And we can't do that if we are meeting chaos with chaos. If we have emotional regulation, we can manage the relationship in the way that it's better suited as the Not easy. I mean, when you start to look at really trying to build a well-being strategy, you need to be looking at each individual person. Have the CEO walking the floor of the hospital just walking the floor of the hospital and seeing, for example, oh, the printer is broken in one of the, you know, in where the group of nurses have to go and print off stuff for their patient. And so instead that nurse has to run down to another printer and it just escalates tensions. These are tiny little pebbles. These are issues that cost a hundred bucks to fix. But when a CEO walks the floor of a hospital, that is the difference between you know, potentially a malpractice lawsuit in the millions. So there's significant um, impacts to having someone, you know, getting down into the weeds and talking to people that are doing the work. When I talk about simple actions and complex benefits, it's important to know you can't think that it's silly to do the, the work. Hope is really important when we start talking about hope. It's not wishful thinking. Hope is about pathways and agencies and about goal setting. One of the ways that you can develop cognitive hope is by making your bed. That um, really isn't just about making your bed. It is about accomplishing one small task at the start of your day to make you believe that you can accomplish more goals. We need to create habits. One of the habits is set a calendar reminder every Friday. That's what I do, 2.39 p.m. 
Make sure you set a calendar reminder to say thank you to someone. Only 29% of people thank their peers. (laughs) 